I'm going to attach some circles. Let's go back to our green color. I'm going to attach some circles for the holes. And turn these into construction class. Okay. Now what I want to do here on the, the subject of this video, if we go back to that, is conditional formatting. What I want to say is if the overall width of the part it gets too small. Let's look at it if it happens here. We can have overlapping circles, which is not a good thing. Overlapping holes. So I want to say that the minimum distance between the holes is equal to the radius, is equal to two times the radius, say. Uh, or the minimum distance between centers should be equal to three times the radius. So let's type something like that in. Whole centers minimum is equal to um, three times whole rad and just increase the text size and we need to write that variable again so it can be used in the equation Sign the equation. Whole center is min and whole rad. So that's the minimum distance between circles as I, as I want to know. So what I'm going to do now is I want a visual cue on width. If this value becomes less than this value. So let's use our equation for conditional results and minimums. Now I have typed in the correct values. So minimum is equal to whole center min minus the nominal value here which is um, whole centers and let's just copy that and paste it over to the other side. Shift insert to paste and apply. Now let's assign the equation and again I'm going to do my little trick here of changing the color of these to ensure if they turn white that no that tells me that my equation was applied correctly. So I need to get whole centers min and whole centers. So reset and my value is zero and that's correct. So let's start it off with a value of 1. So I'm going to deliberately make my whole centers too small to make my value equals 1. Now what I want to do is I want to put a, a red box around width if the width is too narrow. And I can put it, put it around whole radius as well. So let's do that. Let's draw a box around that and a box around that. Better again. 
Let's put them beside each other so we can have one box. In fact, I'm going to draw my constructions first for the box. And instead of applying constraints in the usual way, I'm just going to constrain these three as constants. I'm going to constrain the top one as a horizontal line. I'm going to put a dimension between them. I'm going to assign this value to dimension. My conditional result. And you can see that's gone quite small. There's a very simple fix for that. We multiply this whole equation by whatever height we want, because we have one, so we just multiply it by the ordinary height. I imagine something like 25 will do this. Let's look at our result. We get 25 now. And it's not quite enough. Try again. 45. Reevaluate. Now we can see there's a box drawn around our variables. Let's attach some line strings to that. I'm going to need some point some constraints to attach to. So I'm going to constrain some points at intersections here. I'll attach my graphic. I'm going to put some fill on that. And then I want to bring the text to the front here so that it can be seen. And now When my width is OK, and turn off constructions as well. Now when my width is OK, uh -huh, I have, should have that as a primary element. Now, when my width is OK, there's no box behind the line, but we still have this green line. There's a very simple way to get rid of that, to hide that, is to change its colour to the background colour. And now it won't appear in the scene. But if our width gets too small, you can see now it has put it in the wrong place. <laughs> What's happened there is when it was zero, it didn't know which way to push the line, so it chooses the default way. But that's it's not a problem, we can just when you have to do this once. We can move these elements. As I say again, it's good to see the problems that can happen. Now have a final solution. So that's conditional formatting. With a lot of the problems that you may run into yourself, so that should help with the troubleshooting as well.